forward. Great. Well, welcome to Red, Blue, and You. We are so excited to have you here with us today. My name is Brooke Richardson, and I'm the Assistant Director for Parent and Family Programs. And Red, Blue, and You is one of the steps in the orientation process here at SMU. So it's actually the first step as part of Mustang Startup when you have um, some to-do items to complete before you get to campus for your second step, which is Stampede. So we are just so excited to tell you about life on the hilltop and prepare you before you come to campus and really just a few short days. So um, we're really excited about that. We have about 45 minutes together. So um, just know that we will um, be diving into some content, answering your burning questions. And again, we just wanna prepare you for all the things to expect um, as you journey to SMU. Um, and we'll get started with some intro so you know who is in the room. And as I mentioned, my name is Brooke Richardson. I oversee parent and family programs. And I'm gonna pass it to Becca to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. My name is Becca Umabong. I'm the Director of Academic Skill Development within Student Academic Success Programs. Welcome. Thanks, Becca. And next, I'd like for Prisna to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Prisna Virison in the Academic uh, Advising Center, the University Advising Center, and I'm also the instructor for the Pre-Advising Canvas course. Thank you. Next, we have Syra. Hi everyone, I'm Syra Castillo. I am a transfer student, double majoring in journalism and English with a minor in Italian and I'm a sophomore. Thanks. And then last but not least, we have John. Hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm John Martin, the Assistant Director of Orientation and Transitions here at SMU. I oversee the Campus Life modules as part of Mustang Startup and Stampede, our in-person orientation. Excited to have you here. Yay, thanks so much. All right, we'll get started with the next slide and a few reminders. Um, so just know that closed captions and full transcripts are available. If that is something you would like to opt into today, that's available on your Zoom screen. Additionally, we did talk a little bit about question and answers at the beginning of this. So just know that you are welcome to use the Q&A function in the chat to ask any questions you may have. Um, and then we will try to uh, answer that in the order in which we see them or appear. Um, but feel free to start um, asking questions because we want to answer them. So um, that is something to note. And then last but not least, this session is being recorded and it will be posted online on our Red, Blue and You website tomorrow. So you're welcome to revisit this, watch it again, share it with a friend. Um, and so just something to note. So we'll um, dive into our next slide. We do have some helpful reminders um, before we dive deeper into content. Um, and these reminders are all about your checklist and things to complete prior to you arriving on campus. So um, this is all available in your my.smu.edu. So you've probably already seen this multiple times, but we just wanted to share a few reminders um, so that everyone is on the same page. Um, and we'll start with the pre-enrollment survey. That's something you should have completed. Um, in addition to your uh, health history form, be sure to submit that as well as your photo ID for your SMU ID card. They're printing those um, pretty immediately so, and it takes a little bit to process. So be sure to submit that because um, you want your SMU ID for sure. Um, next, we have good standing forms. So that's something um, where you're actually gonna have to um, release your records um, so that that form can be completed, sent to your prior institution, completed by them, and then, and then sent back to SMU um, so that our admissions office can receive that. So they will, um, they will receive that. It will appear as completed in your my.smu.edu checklist. However, if they have any follow-up questions for you, admissions will um, reach out or CC you in an email. So just be sure to be on the lookout um, in case there's any additional action required of you for that. Next, you'll wanna be sure to submit your final transcripts. Um, I, I know that if you're attending or have attended Richmond University, they're releasing transcripts tomorrow, um, but submitting transcripts is essential, especially when it comes to completing the pack and enrolling and meeting with your advisor. So you'll definitely want to do that first. And that's something Prisna is welcome to talk about as well. Um, but that is something to note in addition to completing the campus life modules. So that's um, gonna tell you all about our campus life um, and things that you'll, you'll want to know for sure. Um, so 
just note that. Um, and then, like I said, we've got the pack and meeting with your advisor and enrolling in courses. Um, and then we also want to make you aware of uh, emergency contacts. So that's something that um, will be a hold if you do not complete that now. Um, it'll be a hold for your future enrollment. So it's just good to go into my.smu, go ahead and list your emergency contact. It just has to be one person, but you're going to want to do that so that later down the line, you don't get stuck in an enrollment hold. Um, when it comes um, time to plan for next semester. So we have, you know, just a few reminders, um, but they are really important for you to complete um, because they, they are kind of a domino effect. And I just want to open it up to John or Prisna. Is there anything else you would recommend for students or remind them about um, in addition to some of the things mentioned here? Yeah, so for Campus Life Module, since my office oversees that, uh, like you mentioned, Brooke, this is uh, online modules for an online orientation experience to help acclimate you to campus before you get here. Um, all students have to do this, and if they do not, um, by our by January 8th, a hold gets placed on their account, which affects their ability to register uh, for classes in the subsequent semester. So make sure that you complete this and you can access it in your my.smu account, or you can go to orientation.smu.edu, which will take you directly to that page. Just know if it's your first time logging into the Campus Life modules that you need to select student as opposed to guest. So the guest is for parents, family members, um, other people who want to see what you're looking at. Um, and there's some specific parent uh, courses in there that if they'd like to uh, take those, they're an optional course for them. But uh, for students, just make sure you click that student button and log in with your student um, account information. Otherwise, we won't be able to track your information. You'll continue to receive um, you'll continue to receive emails from us reminding you to complete that. So uh, it's live right now. Love for you to complete that. If you have any questions, let us know. Awesome. Krista, is there anything you would add to this? Yes, um, our advisors are waiting to meet with you. All you have to do is um, get all of your materials in, your required materials, complete the pack, uh, read the directions carefully. The final quiz uh, does have very specific directions. Um, and the quiz will be graded once all of your papers and uh, documents have been received and processed. Um, and there are very specific directions on how to make an appointment with your assigned academic advisor. So we can't wait to see you. Yay, thank you. Thanks for sharing all that. Yay, well, we'll go ahead and go to our next slide to give you an overview of all the topics that we will dive deeper into today that we're really excited about. So we're going to start with academic support, move on to degree planner. What's that? Well, so glad you asked. We'll tell you a little bit more. Um, we'll talk about well-being, campus life, and last but not least, Stampede. So we'll go ahead and dive into academic support, which is our next slide. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Becca to um, tell us more about academic support at SMU. Great. Thank you so much, Brooke. Um, hey, everybody. Again, my name is Becca Umabong, and I'm the Director of Academic Skill Development within Student Academic Success Programs. And we have a lot of academic services available to you, and this is at no additional cost for any of our services. I want to go through all these services and then also give you guys a few tips um, at, to do well academically um, this semester at SMU. So the first thing is academic counseling. So we have three people available, including myself, who counsel students one-on-one -on, -one on how to be successful academically. Students can schedule an appointment now, even. We have availability this week and next week, even before school starts, and then throughout the semester. Um, we can go over things like time management, note-taking, test preparation, motivation, finals prep, stress management and test anxiety, and more. Or we can just ask you what your goals are for this semester, and then you can schedule every other week appointments and we can help you stay accountable to your academic goals. Um, we've seen that students who come to regular acad academic counseling tend to do better academically. So we encourage you guys to schedule an appointment with us through academic counseling. We also have disability accommodations and success strategies within our office. So 
So that is for any students with any documented disability, they can submit documentation to online to our DAS office. And it takes a couple weeks to process. And then one of our coordinators will get back to you um, about an intake appointment to talk about the accommodations that would be put in place. So if, if this pertains to you, I highly suggest you get um, the documentation into our disability accommodations office as soon as possible. Um, we also have HDEV 1210, it's Academic Success and Personal Development. This course is um, for students who want to um, increase their reading efficiency, we talk about lifelong learning, and then we talk a lot about executive functioning, so organization, time management, test preparation, and more. We actually have a specialized section for students who are starting this spring, and I'm teaching that section. Um, so if you're interested in that section, I do need to give you permission to enroll. It's on Monday, Wednesday at noon, 12 to 12.50, and I'd love to have you in the class, and I, I'd be happy to give you permission to enroll. All you need to do is send me an email, and I can put my email in the chat in a second. It's just Rebecca at smu.edu, and I'd be happy to give you permission to enroll in that class. We also have another general section that still has seats available, and that is on Tuesday and Thursday at 9.30. Um, the class is two credits and it's graded, so it definitely could help with your GPA as well as you can gain a lot of skills throughout that course. We have tutoring. Um, our, our tutoring program is robust. We have we hire about 100 plus peer tutors per semester, and we have tutoring for um, almost all first and second year courses as well as some junior and senior level courses. Tutoring is drop in and available six days a week. So um, by the second week of classes, you'll see our tutor schedule on our website and you can look up, let's say you're in, let's say economics 1312, you can go scroll down in alphabetical order on our tutor schedule and you'll see when we tutor economics 1312. Um, we tutor Sundays, five to 10 p.m., Monday through Thursday, two to 10, and then Fridays from one to five. And it's peer tutoring. So it's kind of an informal way to learn more information about the subject matter. And you can ask um, the tutors questions. I, I find tutoring really, really helpful. I have students who will go in every day they have class. Like let's say I'll give economics example again, maybe they have economics Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they come in to see a tutor after every single class session, just to make sure they understand the material and that helps reinforce the information that they've learned. So I highly recommend that um, you utilize tutoring throughout the semester. We also have a writing center and the writing center is by appointment. So tutoring's drop in, the writing center is by appointment and the faculty in the writing center can help with any type of paper at any point in the writing process. So let's say you're at the beginning of a paper and you're not quite understanding the prompt, you can come to the writing center, or maybe you're at the end and you want someone to really look over your organization um, and everything, you can come to the writing center. So I highly recommend you utilize that for all your papers. Um, or even it could be like a scientific, um, um, it could be a, a lab write-up that you're doing and you can come to the writing center or a scholarship application, you come to the writing center. So they can help with any writing um, at, during your undergraduate career. We also have workshops and students can register for those and those are over executive functioning skills, kind of like I talked about earlier, time management, organization, um, study strategies, test preparation and more throughout the semester. And you're welcome to, to register for those. But if you can't make it during the times that we have the workshop scheduled, you're always welcome to schedule an appointment for academic counseling. So I've been at SMU for a while. I wanted to give you guys some tips. Um, time management is just crucial to your success here. Um, I recommend that students study about two hours outside of class for every credit hour that you're in. So let's say you sign up for 15 hours, 15 credits, um, you should be studying about 30 hours a week. Now, it also depends on, you know, what your prior knowledge is in each subject um, and depending on if maybe you're a pre-health student or engineer. But that's why I think um, coming to a workshop about time management or coming to academic counseling to learn more about time management or enrolling in this HDEV 1210 course where we go over time management extensively can be really, really helpful and beneficial to your academic success. Um, I really want you guys to stay ahead of all your work so that you don't get behind because once you get behind, it's really hard to catch up. And another tip that I have for you guys with time management is to always, always, always work two days ahead. 
always make that a rule for your life. So let's say you have a test on Friday by Wednesday night, you should feel completely confident that you can ace that test. And that way you have Thursday as kind of like a buffer day in case you want to go over some more difficult material. If you have a assignment due on Monday, don't wait till Sunday night, uh, get that done by Saturday or even by Friday. Friday I see is kind of one, the, one of the most underutilized um, times for students to study. So utilize that afternoon time. I'm not saying you have to study late at night on Friday, but utilize your afternoon time or in between classes. Um, the other thing too is if you can't, if you're living on campus, don't go back to your room in between classes. Make sure you have everything packed in your backpack for what you need for class and for studying. And that way in between classes or before and after class, you're going straight to the library to study. So you're utilizing your daytime hours as effectively as possible. And the other thing is to just get involved in at least one or two campus organizations so that you can get involved in on campus and meet some other people. So that's what I have. If there are any questions um, or if there anything came up in the Q&A, um, I'd be happy to answer those. Thanks, Becca. I'm not seeing anything right now. Oh, we just had one question. Um, so someone will be needing your email so they can ask uh, if they can register for the HDEP class. Um, so yeah, if you can put that in the chat, that would be really yep. helpful. Put um, it in the chat right now. Thank yeah. you. So much. And um, as y'all are marinating on um, all the info that Becca shared, feel free to continue to ask in the chat. Um, this is interactive and ongoing, so we want to be sure we get those uh, questions answered for you. Um, but we'll uh, we'll wait until we maybe have some more questions later at the end, uh, and then we'll go ahead and move on. So thanks so much, Becca. All right, we'll advance to our next slide. And degree planner. So this is uh, Prisna's expertise. Um, so we'll pass it off to her. Hey everyone. Um, so SMU has this tool and it is a great tool for students. Um, it's a planning tool for your courses. So as a first year student, um, we focus more on planning out your common curriculum, your uh, general education CCs, that's what we call them. Um, because some of you don't know what you're majoring in yet. <laughs> so um, we don't want to put that much pressure on you. So you lay out your common curriculum and you can see them over, over you know, all the semesters you have left. Um, once you decide what you're majoring in and once you declare your major, we focus on plotting those uh, courses out in Degree Planner. Um, and nothing set in stone. You can always do a, a what if or you can uh, explore some different um, majors and see how they lay out. Um, some other useful things for degree planner, let's say you're deciding to study abroad, maybe summer of sophomore year, you can um, take a look at the programs and say, oh gosh, well, I'm gonna save this CC for the, my summer in France, right? Um, and so it can help you take a really long look at your career at SMU. The best way to learn degree planner um, is to book a book an appointment with a pal and a pal is a peer academic leader um, they have workshops so if you don't want to just do a one-on-one -on -one with a pal and and set up your degree planner you're welcome to go to a workshop and meet other students and and you guys are planning things out together um, so i will put the um the link to the pals page uh in the chat so you don't need to know everything about Degree Planner just yet. Just know that we'll be mentioning it. And um, we do expect you to start playing around with Degree Planner just so you're thinking about long-term planning. Thanks, Prisna. I don't see any um, specific questions in the chat right now about Degree Planner, but um, I know in this uh, orientation cycle, we have a lot of transfer students. So um, is there any difference in how a transfer student might approach Degree Planner versus a first year um, freshman? Yes, a, a transfer student, most likely, um, if they are a declared major, um, can plan out the rest of their semesters knowing um, the courses required for the major that they have left using the catalog. So um, it's kind of the same difference between a first year student who's still experimenting. Um, we would focus on the CCs, the general education. Um, once the student declares a major transfer or not, um, then we focus on planning out the rest of the degree. 
Okay, that's very helpful. Well, thank you. I'll it, put that link in the chat. Yeah, and the PALS uh, resource is also a really good link. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. We did have um, someone ask a question, actually. They said, do we need to have a specific major already in mind? That is, I have not declared as a business major. I need to apply to Cox. So can I stay undeclared until I apply? That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, all of our students actually stay undeclared until they declare. Um, so all of our first year students come in as what we call pre-majors. Um, and here at the UAC, we work with pre-major students. Um, and once all the subset courses are done in certain majors, or uh, perhaps the student finally decides, yes, I want to be a political science major, I've taken my two or three classes, and I'm for sure wanting political science, then we, um, we walk you through the declaration process. So you're not alone. A, a bunch of students are pre-majors. Great, thank you. Um, we also had another question come through. Um, this student asked, can the degree planner be used for summer intercessions? Yes, you can plan all your summers. Um, you can plan, um, if you're going to Taos, we know what classes are being taught at Taos, you can put those classes in. Um, if you're going through an SMU program in the summer, we know what classes uh, you're thinking about even uh, especially study abroad they have their classes um, summer classes we can guesstimate what classes are being taught um, usually the, the classes are released by march for that summer perfect yes i appreciate the planner questions um <laughs> i'm a planner too so i understand if someone is needing to map out their entire smu experience um that's really relatable so uh great well i think those are all the questions we've had thus far about degree planner so we'll go ahead and move on to our next slide thanks so much prisna and this slide is my slide so we're shifting gears a little bit. Um, academic well-being is very important, of course, but so is all the other aspects of well-being. Um, so we really view well-being as holistic here at SMU. So we wanted to share some FYIs and um, important resources um, as you journey uh, to the hilltop. So one uh, awesome area that I wanted to mention was the Dr. Bob Smith Health Center. This is kind of your one-stop shop for all things um, physical wellness, I would say. Um, so we have a counseling center that is phenomenal. They offer in-person services. They also do off-campus referrals. And um, last year, they actually uh, launched teletherapy. So that's really great if you are um, just needing a, a different mode of counseling, um, especially if you're an out-of-state student or um, just would like to continue in that way. So they have a lot of great services. Um, and we know that mental health and well-being is one of the most um, top concerns that families have of students. And, um, and it's becoming um, just, just more um, accepting to go to counseling. Um, and so we just want to promote that and share with you that that exists here at SMU. And it's an awesome resource. Um, additionally, the Health Center also has an on-campus dentist, they have doctors, and a pharmacy. So it really is a one-stop shop if you have really any um, physical ailments or needs. And then I also want to um, share about a relaxation room that they have. Um, so you can make an appointment. If you're a student, you can make an appointment to this room. And it truly is just a relaxation room and a way to de-stress. So if you have you know, five minutes in between class and maybe you're a commuter student and you're on campus and you just need a five minute wellness break, um, I recommend using the relaxation room because it's a cool new resource um, and it's gotten a lot of uh, positive response from our students. So I would recommend checking that out. And then additionally, I wanna talk about um, campus recreation. So we do have the Dedman Center for Campus Recreation um, on our campus. They have an amazing indoor facility with um, all sorts of sports courts and um, physical workout equipment. Um, so it's really awesome. There's also um, a lap pool, just a lot of neat things over there. They offer intramurals as well as outdoor excursions. So if you are interested in any of that, just know that um, we provide that here at SMU. Additionally, I want to talk about the Office of Well-Being. So this is uh, an awesome office that has a lot of educational resources. They actually have a team of students called the Westies 
who are here to help promote wellness and wellness education. Um, and so we actually just have um, a, a new uh, staff member who is overseeing care and recovery support. So if you or your student is in need of additional support specifically in the care and recovery realm, I recommend uh, reaching out to our staff member. Her name's Jennifer Barker. She's awesome um, and has a lot of great resources for students. So I um, wanted to mention that if you're interested. And then last but certainly not least, I wanna talk about caring community connections or as we call them CCCs. CCCs um, is a program out of the uh, Office for Student Advocacy and Support. And what CCCs are, um, it's basically a form where you would go online and if you have um, a need as a student um, or your student has a need, say um, someone in the family has passed away um, and uh, they need additional support in navigating academics and tests, um, then you would wanna fill out a CCC and that would prompt um, different campus partners to be made aware of that situation so that the university can really rally around your student and support them um, in all the different aspects that they're navigating. Um, and so they would meet with someone in that office um, and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to figure out you know, how we can best support them um, during their time at SMU as they're navigating some tough circumstances. So if there's ever a, a time where you would like to say, hey, SMU, I'm struggling. I don't know how to how to navigate this or, hey, my student's struggling or we just need additional support, then I recommend filling that out. Um, and all of these links will be available on a resource page, which will be shared at the very end of this webinar in the chat. So just know that you'll have access to these specific links if you if you want to reference them. Um, but those are a few of our amazing resources related to well-being that we really wanted to mention and, and bring forth today. So I'm going to see if there's anything in the chat that I can help answer. Let's see, um, we have a question about is counseling covered by the school or insurance or is there any fee? So that's specifically, um, I would um, recommend you reaching out to um, the counseling services um, group. They have a lot more information on that. Um, I don't wanna give you an incorrect answer, but um, I do know that they would be able to share a little bit more about the specifics related to that. Good question though. Um, I don't see any more wellness questions. So we will continue to advance and then any remaining questions, again, we will answer at the very end. So thanks for submitting them, keep them coming. We want to answer them. Um, and then next I'll pass it off to Syra. Um, she is our awesome student leader, student representative. So I'll let her speak on campus life and her experience. Hi everyone, um, just a reminder, I'm Syra and I'm a sophomore. There are so many um, opportunities to be involved on campus. Just to briefly state what I'm in, I'm a part of the Daily Campus, our student newspaper. Um, I'm a part of a multicultural Greek sorority here on campus as well. I am an event coordinator for OLA, our Hispanic or Latino association. And um, I am also a student worker for Dr. Meje, who is our vice president for student affairs. So there are lots of opportunities for you here on campus once you get here. Um, for student organizations, the, the few that I just mentioned are great. They're awesome. I would highly recommend you join them. Um, during Stampede, you'll have more opportunities to meet the other clubs and just to get to know people, which will also be an easy way for you to make friends. Um, there are lots of free events during um, Stampede and during the school year. Um, what I did when I got here on campus last January was I went to everything because I knew there was going to be free food, free merchandise, and in doing that, I met a lot of great people. And I um, made two of my closest friends that I have here at school. So I'm very, very happy that I put myself out there and left my dorm room and um, just exposed myself to new environments. Um, athletic games, we have a lot of those, like the intramural sports, um, our football uh, games, basketball games, you'll get emails um, uh, reoccurringly on your um, your email uh, reminding you to claim your tickets. That way you can go join all the fun activities. Um, we also have our Red, Blue, and You podcast, so you'll be able to, you know, listen to the, the um, occurring questions that different families have and students have, and that way you can have a more peaceful transition to college. 
Um, there's also Transfer uh, Podcast, which I was on last year. Um, and that way you can hear about my story and um, another transfer student story about how, how we transitioned and some challenges we did face, but how overall in the end it was very much worth it. Um, I'm also part of the Financial Literacy Podcast, where I um, talk about how to obtain outside scholarships and how I was able to manage those scholarships and apply for them. Um, some tips and tricks I would give you would be to, as I mentioned earlier, put yourself out there, go to everything, talk to your professors. They truly do want to get to know you. Um, they're very sweet, very kind, and they do want the best for you. Um, go to their office hours if you are struggling, um, just to get to know them. That way you can, um, expand your relationship with them and they can be able to help you the best way that they can go to the university advising center i'm always there um because sometimes i'm like what if i don't want to be a journalism major but um it's just something that happens when you're in college and it's something that you'll get used to um and then some things that really helped me while I was transitioning was just to make time during the day to call your parents because they do want to hear how you're doing. And just, just to hear their voice is something that really is peaceful and calming when you're having a stressful day. And I'm so excited that you're here and I can't wait to see y'all in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Kyra. As y'all can tell, she is a rock star student and just amazing person all around. Um, and I love her story because she was in your shoes just a year ago and she has made such a legacy already on this campus. So um, just wanna give her a, a big kudos and shout out um, for being so, so awesome. So thanks Syra and thanks for sharing all that. Um, and then next we're gonna go ahead and transition to our last speaker, which is John and he will talk about Stampede. All right, so we are almost there. Stampede is next weekend for our new students. So on January 12th and 13th, we will be welcoming you to campus. And we've got lots of programming ready for you and your families as you uh, move in and check in for us. So just to give you a very brief overview about the move-in process, I'm not um, with Residence Life and Student Housing. However, I, I know a little bit about this process. So um, you should have, uh, if you are living in a residential commons, uh, have an assigned move in time and you can get that by uh, submitting your housing application on their portal at their website. So RLSH Relish or Residence Life and Student Housing is where you would go for that. And they'll have all the information for check-in for that process. But if you're not moving in to a residential commons and you're just commuting to campus, um, just so you know for Stampede for that weekend, we will have all the parking garages, the gates will be open. So you're free to park in any of those areas. Um, as you come to campus. So to give you an overview of the schedule on Friday, we have uh, starting off our Family Fest, which is in the Hughes Trigg Student Center Atrium. And um, primarily, basically, most of our uh, events are gonna be indoors since it's January, it's a little colder. We wanna make sure you're warm and comfy. So um, Family Fest will be in the Hughes, Hughes Trigg Student Center Atrium. And on our website, we have a map of all the locations of our events. And when you check in for Stampede, uh, all students will get a name tag that has a QR code, which will take you directly to that website. So if you're ever confused about where to go or where things are located, um, you could use that QR code to, to help you out there. But all the information, if you're a family member, um, that's on our website as well for you to view. So uh, Family Fest, it's really, it's a resource fair for campus partners um, all around campus to help you get acclimated to campus um, and learn about resources to help you be successful as a student. So that'll be occurring at 2.30. And if you are attending Family Fest, we will have student workers that will escort students and families over to Rotunda Passage. But if you're not attending Family Fest, just make sure you're at Rotunda Passage, which is at the SMU flagpole around four o'clock to give you some time to line up um, and go through, which is, one, which is one of the most rich traditions we have here on campus. It's symbolizing your walk uh, through campus to become an actual Mustang. So we'll have uh, some special speakers for that and to welcome you to campus. After Rotunda Passage, it's a good time to say goodbye to your parents because we're gonna split students and families off. If families, if you if you have family members that are still present with us on campus, families will be going to an evening social hosted by the, mo the mom, Mothers and Dads Club um, and students will be taking a Mustang class photo at the Cruth Hall Stairs, which is across from uh, the, across the street from Hughes Trick Student Center. So we'll take that quick class photo and then students will be escorted to back to Hughes Trig in our ballroom, which is 
um, in the basement level. And that's where we'll have an actual check-in process for you to receive your name tag, get some fun swag and escort you um, to your table for dinner where we'll have uh, more guest speakers. Um, it's a really ex exciting time where we welcome students to campus and get you ready for the rest of the week. After that, we'll do Mustang meet and greet, which is a really fun social party gathering. We'll have DJ, lots of games, lots of giveaways. You can get some t-shirts there. Um, and just a time for you guys to hang out, be social with each other, get to know other members of your class. And we'll end it for uh, the day after that. Starting on Saturday, we, we come back for coffee on the hilltop at 10 a.m. Again, this is in Hughes Trig Ballroom. And uh, it says 10 a.m., but it's probably gonna be more helpful if you can check in around 9.30 because we're gonna start the, the content right at 10, moving into taking care of SMU, which is about well-being, campus well-being um, for yourself and for uh, your fellow classmates and campus overall. We'll give you a, a quick break for lunch, which will be provided by us. Uh, and then we'll start the academic portions of Stampede, which will be a resource fair and then you will uh, be escorted to your respective school meetings, which are in accordance of your pre-major. So uh, those will be in different locations around campus, but we'll have student workers that will escort you to where you need to be. And finally, we've got an optional uh, campus tour. If you'd like to take that, we have uh, Campus Visits partnering with us to escort students around for an official tour. We know you've some of you have been on campus before and have taken a campus tour, but um, you're interacting with campus differently now since you're a current student. So there might be um, buildings you want to see to know where are my classes on uh, my first day of class. I want to know where I need to be, be extra prepared. This is a, an opportunity for you to do that. So we're really excited for you to, to come here. Um, we're, we've done a lot of prep work to get ready for uh, Stampede and there's going to be lots of giveaways, lots of fun times. It should be very informative. Um, so get excited. We'll see you next weekend. Thanks, John. We appreciate that. And we did have a few questions um, come through. So one question is, does Stampede conflict with fraternity and sorority life uh, recruitment processes? That's a good question. So we've been partnering with fraternity sorority life for recruitment. Um, if you have particular um, times that you need to, to go to a specific session, you are welcome to do that. None of our events are actually required. However, we recommend that you attend Rotunda Passage as far as I understand, um, you you are you, you're given an option of a number of uh, fraternity sorority life sessions that you can go to per day. So um, you can structure that out in your schedule to make sure you're hitting both Stampede events and fraternity sorority life recruitment requirements. That's helpful. Thank you. And I know you mentioned Rotunda Passage, um, the iconic event, and we had a question about: um, Is there a dress code for Rotunda? That's a common question. So um, traditionally students have chosen to wear all white to this event. However, it is not required in any sense. Um, that is up to you if you'd like to do that. Just keep in mind as well, it will be probably cold because we will be standing outside in the flagpole escorting you to Dallas Hall. So um, that's that's my only recommendation for for uh, whatever you'd like to wear, but uh, it's it's totally optional. It's not something that's required for you to wear white, but if you'd like to, please feel free. Awesome. Thank you. Um, great. Well, we also had a question about um, orientation being mandatory. Um, so can you explain a little bit more about that and um, just the nature of it being encouraged, et cetera? Yes. Yeah, so um, none of our events are technically required, however, highly encouraged. This is really a great opportunity for you to get to meet other students around campus, other staff and faculty that will be present. Um, Studies show that students who attend orientation have a much better success rate of reta retaining and, and having a better overall experience. So we want that for you. Um, we understand that with transfer students, sometimes you're coming from different stages of life. Um, maybe you're you're coming back and you're a little bit older or um, you've done something like a, a stampede before and that's understandable. So um, technically we don't require anything. We just we, we work really hard to create an informative, educational, and fun experience for students, so we do highly encourage it. Yeah, thank you. Like Syrah said earlier, you know, she knew there was going to be free free food, swag, all the goodies, so. Um, right. Lots of giveaways, lots of food, yeah. but that's, that's always a given. <laughs> Yay, okay, well, thanks so much for sharing about Stampede, and we'll click to um, our second to last slide. 
So we do have um, just a few helpful reminders. Um, one thing that I do wanna share um, is a resource page, which is um, what I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, our time together. So just know that that is now in the chat if you would like to um, check out any of the links that we have. Some of those links um, will go to our academic calendar, which we'll talk a little bit um, about all the different holidays and breaks that um, students have. That's very helpful for families. Um, we also link to our SMU Parent and Family Experience portal and newsletter. Um, it's one and the same, but essentially this is how we communicate with you and share um, important dates, events, deadlines, um, and also share just updates that you might want to know about SMU and helpful tips. So um, be sure to sign up if you have not already done so. We also have the Stampede website um, listed on that site on that uh, resource page. So if you need any additional specific information, it'll be listed there. And then of course we have additional links. So be sure to check that out. We also have our Red, Blue and You podcast library, which is mentioned, um, mentioned earlier in the webinar. So if you are curious to learn more about uh, Life on the Hilltop, we have podcasts ranging from dining to parking um, to SMU PD and academics. So um, if you would like to listen to our podcasts, you know, maybe while you're commuting or taking a walk, um, feel free to check that out. And then um, we will have a survey coming um, at the end of your orientation process for both new students and families, in which case we have some questions about Red, Blue, and You and just your overall orientation experience. So be sure to complete that because we love feedback and want to just improve the experience and process um, time and time again. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm going to see if we have any further questions. Um, so the resource page, there was a question about that. It is in the chat. Um, so you should be able to click open and download that. Good question. Um, and then I also want to follow up about one of the questions we received um, regarding counseling services and um, whether you have to pay or not. Um, and in doing some additional research, um, all SMU students are eligible to receive free services at the Counseling Center, regardless of insurance. So that is phenomenal um, and something that uh, we just wanted to circle back around on because we know there was a question about that. So I don't see any further questions in our chat, but we are at our time. We are exactly right on time. So Thank you all for being so engaged today. Um, we'll go ahead and click to the last slide so that you can contact us if you have any further questions. Um, we have orientation at smu.edu. Um, if you have Stampede or um, any orientation specific questions. And then families, if you have any specific questions that may extend beyond orientation, feel free to give us an email at parents at smu.edu. And I think that wraps us up for today. Again, we're at time. So if you have any further questions, feel free to give us an email and we will see you in really just a few short days. So enjoy the rest of your Thursday and we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.